If there was going to be a dream team of aquascapers coming out of the United States, we've got some guys from the Aquascapers Collective that would be on that team. But if I had to grab two captains for that team, you're staring at them right here. We've got Jeff and Mike Sensky from the Aquarium Design Group. I'm sure many of you have heard of it if you haven't. In uh, about 2008, I went to the Aquatic Gardeners Convention and I saw these guys' uh, aquariums and it kind of changed my game. And uh, they both have studied under the late Takashi Amano and have been instrumental in the aquarium uh, just design game here in the U.S. You can see some of the stuff coming on behind here. I am, uh, I'm super excited to have it. They have an amazing gallery down in Houston that I've had people that have nothing to do with planted aquariums or design say it's simply remarkable. Um, just like pioneers, these guys do background designs for some of the like uh, ready-made design. Uh, it's a great honor to uh, introduce Mike and Jeff Sensky of the Aquarium Design Group. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dustin, for that amazing introduction. Man. That's how it is. <laughs> really awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, it's real honor to be here. The show's been absolutely just exceeding all expectation. So yeah, I guess we're just gonna maybe talk a little bit about uh, our philosophy, kind of what our perspective is on aquarium hobby and maybe a little bit about the industry in general. Our approach and a lot of what we do with the designs we create, a lot of the sort of aquascaping philosophy that we employ is geared towards attracting or, or showing somebody something that I think most of us would agree is a, is a fairly sophisticated expression inside the aquarium, right? This is, a, this is not a blue gravel in a bubbling sea chest. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but um, it's showing something that's sophisticated or uh, has an eye for aesthetics or design or composition or kind of leading with design. Uh, I, I'd love to see just a cultural shift where it was just more common for people to have aquariums in their spaces and we're always looking for ways to do that. You know, and just on the subject of resources, um, with the fantastic, you know, Aquascapers Collective here and you guys, uh, as you know, HIP with the fourth place uh, uh, award in the IAPLC this year. Uh, number one, a, a, just a massive accomplishment for any aquascaper to a, an even more significant accomplishment for a uh, for somebody who aquascaped within the U.S. There's a couple of other guys that put USA, but they, you know, if you're putting USA as your entry, it's fine, but you live in Japan. And this is a different thing. And by that, I mean the resources available. And this ties into kind of what I'm talking about as far as our philosophy, but uh, to achieve a high level work in the United States today, uh, when we talk about the world stage of aquascaping, this is a much, much, much bigger feat that the rest of the world I don't think has any idea because the guys aquascaping in the Asian and European markets, unless you've been there, you cannot begin to fathom the depth and vastness of the resources there. So to pull together something what HIP did uh, takes a, a layer of a vision and determination and creativity that I, I, I'm gonna make it my a little personal campaign maybe here in the social media and everything else over the next year to really kind of draw a little attention to the significance of that given the bordering on scarcity of the types of resources specifically for aquascaping that they have in the rest of the world that I think we're all really, really passionate about building here. Obviously guys like Dustin too, just, just really doing the work to try and bring these things to everybody. And even at that, I'm sure knowing the struggles and obviously increased demand just fuels all of this. And so while sometimes in our work, you might see a plastic plant, uh, you, you may see, you know, a lot of our hardscape only designs are very minimal. Um, you know, that I know isn't necessarily to the tastes of, of everybody's particular niche, perhaps, but just always know that uh, that's what, what I, when I put a plastic plant in a tank, it's really only trying to open the door. It's trying to show greater opportunity to people as an entry point 
because as all the high level aquascapers here know, do, that is not an easy thing to do. And there's a body of knowledge, a lot of experience. If you just set up a planet tank with CO2, bright light and soil, um, don't, don't have travel plans for at least the next 30 to, to 60 days. I mean, it's just, it would be a mistake. You're not going on vacation for a week uh, because you're going to be needing to keep an eye on this thing. You're going to be doing the water changes, all the rest of it. The guy next to you. Uh, this is my brother, Mike. Uh, first of all, thank you, Dustin. I always enjoy talking to you on the phone. Thanks for having us over here and sharing the love, brother, and staying diligent and doing the work and boots on the ground and making it happen. And uh, awesome to see the collective aquascapers here as well, keeping the movement going, aquascaping, the, the live aquascaping demos over there and working with people I think is amazing. It gives people a firsthand, just initial experience of putting it together and how cool it can be and getting them into all that. Um, we're both speaking for Jeff also, it's been a, uh, it's the, the whole Aquashella thing. We, have, we haven't done any things like this. We haven't, he's just been to the aquatic experience and stuff, but I haven't been out to any things of these things in a while. So it's always nice and refreshing to get away from ADG and just the inspiration of meeting and seeing you guys and, and just uh, getting all the positive feedback and all the love and everything and taking all that, that back with us as, as well. Um, but I think what Jeff said, you know, he's, he's better at, at wording it properly but just the, the overall philosophy and of, uh, with aquascaping and the design and just the initial inspiration and getting getting those people you know there's, there's all the hobbyists that are into it. well ever you know they, they do it but getting those those people into it the aquarium lover that uh that love an aquarium but approaching it where it's just not so intimidating you know with uh, the right plants uh, maybe uh, jeff's kind of developed a style in the gallery just using you know um you know anubias mosses ricardia you know, Bucephalandras and things like that that are just, where you're not committed to a soil, you're not necessarily committed to daily water changes, um, but yet it's extremely beautiful. And I think getting people into that success early on is important for them to kind of continue on as well and then embracing aquascaping and everything else. So. You know, I hate to use like a term, but like they're like OGs, right? Like original gangsters. So um, I want to kind of take that term and somehow tie it to a motto, but I think that, I think there's, they, they wanted to talk about it and I think it's worth Kind of pointing out can mike can you kind of talk about your origins with this like because you guys have been doing this for a while can you kind of talk about how you all got into it uh i did a kids aquascaping contest because i want to poison the young kids but can you talk about like you know when you were younger how that started and then how you guys got to become ADG. I'll give you a, a quick cliff notes of it. So aquariums go back in our family, a couple, but go back in our family a couple of generations. Um, our uh, father was born in Germany. Our grandfather kept aquariums in Germany and um, uh, had me at a young age and their aquariums were always in the house. Uh, when he, he's a veterinarian and even when he was in veterinary school, he had a small aquarium store in Oklahoma. Uh, so the first time I had my five gallon aquarium and guppies with some floating hornwort and the guppies had babies, that was it. It was, that was on from there. Um, Jeff would kind of follow into the hobby a little bit later um, and embrace it. Uh, early on in the 90s, we did have uh, kind of, I myself and both of us have kind of worked full circle in the industry as young, young guys worked from our experience in retail shops. Uh, in the early 90s, we had a small retail aquarium store, took on a lot of learning lessons at that time. Um, went on to start Aquarium Design Group in 99-2000, which was a challenging year, uh, but had the opportunity to meet uh, Amano at his first trip here for the AGA convention. At that time, Jeff, who uh, handles all the Aquarium Design Group, uh, social media, all the photography, all the video that we're all familiar with, is self-taught. So he has no formal training in photography or video. So we'd hire, you know, you'd see architectural photographers shoot a picture of an aquarium in a room, he'd see the room, not the aquarium, and Jeff really found a way to bring the aquarium into the space. So we traveled to the first AGA, and I remember sitting in the lobby, both Jeff and I, and we hand Amano our pictures. Uh, that Jeff had taken of our early on aquascapes. This is 2000, 2000, 2001. 2000. And um, th these words just still stick with us today. Amano said, you, you, you have beautiful aquariums, you take nice pictures, but your aquariums lack philosophy. And we kind of knew what that meant. It's like Obi-Wan Kenobi kind of telling me like, look, there's no, you're just putting some stuff together. There's not a philosophy or a vision behind that. So, uh, and we had the opportunity to also become an ADA distributor for many years. That allowed us the opportunity to go to Japan uh, for nature aquarium parties. Uh, Jeff actually stayed there longer on one visit and 
did the whole nature aquarium certification program as well um, and had a two the two or three was two or three opportunities I guess that every time Amon would come here for the AGA uh, we would have him back in our hotel room with a half gallon of Jack Daniels and um, you know through a translator but we're able to ask him a lot of questions on and also as a, as a business as well you know like hey did you, you know did you have the account or somebody sitting over you when you want to go to this knockerscape you're in the business you know what it's like when you want to expand or do something that inspires people you got to think about the dollars you put behind it and, and it resonated with us as well it's like no i just i did it for the passion i did i did it to inspire and then the rest would follow follow behind that you know um so we're going on our 18th year in business it's not it's a it's a, cha it's a challenging business um uh, a lot a lot of what you see that we do covers everything from you know decorative fresh water with plastic plants to uh, live reefs. We have a great staff. We're a staff of about 20 in Houston, a staff marine biologist as well. Um, we don't do a lot of live planet tanks. We actually don't do any live planet tanks for our service and maintenance clientele because of the commitment. When they see a, you know, a high tech, high level, they see in a mono picture in a, or your own personal work that you've done that you won an award with, we all know what that commitment is. And so as, a, as an aquarium maintenance service business, that's not a scalable model. Would we love to do that? Would I love to have a team of you guys in Houston doing nothing but aquascaping high-level plant tanks? Sure, but that's not, we're not there yet, you know. Um, uh, but that is still Jeff and uh, I's, our, our true core passion is definitely. If you, see, if you ever had to, if we, if we weren't in the business and you had to take take away it all and say, okay, you guys get to choose one style of aquarium to do, and that's it, it would, it would be the planted aquarium for, for sure. Now, if Jeff, you want to add anything to that? I'm just on the note of uh, Mr. Amano because it's, uh, I can't stress enough and I maybe got caught up in a little bit of a spiel yesterday with the Aquascapers Collective guys just about uh, the importance and the influence and kind of just a certain reverence for, uh, for him that is it's just personally I guess sort of important to me because when we say aquascaping uh, that he we can trace that still to one man and the man just passed three years ago this is like a hundred and fifty years ago there was this guy doing this thing and it's not even like it was a movement or there was you know a group of 10 or 20 or it we literally can trace the, the vastness of this influence to one human being who was only just so recently uh, with us you know so uh, anytime we see a, a, a rocks in a planet tank that's not sticking up like this but tipping over just a little like this and creating a certain indescribable tension or a certain feeling that if I move the rock up two more degrees would change like that perspective that approach that thing that's giving us access to a greater sense of, of design or composition or almost sort of a sort of a cosmic formula of sorts playing out inside the aquarium you know we really can trace that to one man and so uh, getting to know him personally so early in our careers was just I mean I can't I could not state strongly enough how influential that was to the point that literally everything that we've done since is informed by uh, our inspiration from him and I say no Amano uh, no, no mono, no aquascaping, really. We would still just be kind of keeping fish tanks, all of which is fine and beautiful, but I think most of us would agree that when we say aquascaping, this thing has been uh, uh, something new in the, in the hobby, in the industry. This, this has created a whole new dimension and brought new people in and new resources and it, it expanded what the aquarium is. And, uh, you know, anytime we're doing this sort of derivative work, you know, that's really, because if you got it from somebody else, they probably got it from him, you know, and so we can really trace that back. So I like to be very careful not to take, I don't want to, I don't claim too much of this work as uh, I have some unique special vision that someone else doesn't because the very vast majority of kind of the essence of what we do, if not the actual layout, but the essence or the inspiration or the philosophy of that layout is rooted in the teachings of Mr. Amano. And that's just a really big, big thing to me to always make sure that we kind of keep that fresh on our minds, at least through this generation. So um, yeah, absolutely big deal. Uh, just really appreciate it. Thanks so much for listening.